Hi everyone, we're coming to you live on Facebook. I'm Ashley, Education Developer for Blick Art Materials. We're really excited to present this very special uh, acrylic gouache seascape painting demonstration for you this evening. Uh, we're also doing a giveaway. So uh, we'll be giving away a $100 Blick E gift card at the end of this demo. Uh, and you can enter for a chance to win that $100 e-gift card by liking this post, liking us on Facebook and following us, and then answering this question uh, prompt. What is your favorite place to travel or where would you like to travel? Uh, we will be painting uh, from a reference image of a seascape, so it makes sense that we might be thinking about where we like to travel. Maybe it's to uh, the beach to see the seascape or uh, maybe you have a favorite place to hike. Let us know. It's a nice time to imagine where we could be. Uh, so let us know in the chat and you'll be eligible for that gift card. We're going to be using Holbein acrylic gouache on an 8x10 cradled ampersand clay board, uh, which is a very interesting combination as we work through this process, as you'll be able to find out here shortly. Uh, I'm going to be painting using the Princeton Aqua Elite watercolor brushes. So yes, uh, these watercolor brushes are going to be compatible for your uh, acrylic gouache painting techniques. And uh, if you go and check out our bundle page, there's a link provided in the description of this post where you can find all of the products that we're using here today. Uh, and you'll also find this free printable reference image that you can use to help you get started on your own acrylic gouache painting today. So we're gonna keep that in mind. Uh, I have a plethora of colors by Holbein that I'm going to be using. And one of the wonderful things about this product line are all the color options that are available to you. So when you go and check out the colors on that bundle page, uh, check out uh, even more colors by uh, going directly to uh, see those Holbein paints on our website and you'll see all of these amazing options uh, so that you don't have to do so much work color mixing. You can use these colors right out of the tube. So more to come. Uh, like I said, we're working toward this uh, seascape painting and I'd like to go ahead and get started on some of these techniques. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm making a painting is to make a quick sketch. And I'm just going to uh, look here from observation uh, and see a little bit, map out a little bit what kind of colors I would like to use and how I might like to apply them. But this uh, image in particular is nice because we have a clear horizon line that we can refer to to start our drawing. So let's use that as a jumping off point. And I'm just going to uh, kind of darken the sketch that I have here to show you. Uh, where we're going. So I'm working directly on the pre-primed clay board, which is an ultra smooth surface for painting. And uh, usually with watercolors, you would want to start off with uh, a really light sketch. However, the thing that sets gouache apart from watercolor is the fact that it's opaque, meaning that light can't be seen through it. So when it's applied in a nice thick layer, similar to a heavy cream, then you're going to get that opaque effect. Now you just thin down these uh, gouache colors with water, so of course if you wanted it to be more transparent, it could be. So I've established the lighthouse in the horizon line, and we also have a hill. And this is just a very basic drawing. You don't have to think too much about it. And then we've got some waves. And I'm just following along the shape of what's in my reference image and keeping it extremely simple because, again, you will not see this drawing once we get started painting. So the simpler the better. Now the clouds, I'm just going to break out into really basic shapes. And then I'm going to uh, work on filling in these shapes with a series of brush strokes. And I'll show you how here shortly. All right. 
Great. So now we've got our drawing. Very simple and to the point. Our first step is going to be to do some color blocking. That's really the name of the game in this painting, is color blocking and building on layer after layer and adhering to the drying times that you need uh, to uh, make sure that the gouache doesn't get disturbed in the layers underneath and uh, then you get a muddy piece, which is what we don't want. I've also got this uh, palette here that has uh, several more wells than I would typically use. Um, I like all these wells for this painting because I am using quite an array of colors, as you can see, to get to our end result. And this just simply gives me more space for mixing. Uh, so how you space out your colors, uh, how you set up your palette is really going to um, be personal to you, but also you just want to make that work in a way that your colors are easy to mix and not get muddy. So uh, try to keep it as simple as possible. And the more color I'm going to use, the more I'm going to fill in these larger areas and the less color will go into uh, the smaller areas. But I do need to start off with a few primaries. So I'm just going to add a touch of color down here for these colors that I'm starting with. And I want to leave a little bit of room because while this color can be used right out of the tube, we are going to add some water. So I'm just getting my red, yellow, and blue. I'm also going to need some purple and some orange. So I'm going to make some space here for those colors to be mixed down. I'll show you how I'm going to deal with that. All right, so I'm taking clean water and I like to use a pipette because it keeps my water clean. And I'm just adding a little bit to these wells. All right. Now, if I want a little bit of purple, okay, I'm just going to mix in this extra well. And you know, I seem to have misplaced my paper towels. Oh, you know what? I think I found them here. Let's see if I can. Good thing to always have when you're watercolor painting. A couple cups of clean water and paper towels. Just to keep your brushes clean. All right, uh, let's make a quick orange. So still building out these primary colors and I'm just gonna take some of my yellow. All right, so see how easy it can be to utilize these different spaces to build out those color mixtures. A little more yellow. Okay. Basic color mixing. Now, if we want to lighten those colors, we want light purple, and we want to put down this layer a little bit lighter than the other darker layers that are coming. Just add in white. This is kind of a strawberry color. I could make it more orange if I wanted to. We'll see how we go when we start painting. And I've got this nice light purple. Okay. I just want to mix one more color before we put down this layer, and that's green. So as you can see, we can mix these colors. They're perfect for mixing. However, 
You just may not need to mix all of them. We'll find out more. I'll show you. Okay, let's get a little bit of green. Look at this great array of primary colors that we've got. We can go ahead and get started. Now here's the other trick to getting started on this painting. We're going to use these light washes and we're going to get them laid out on here. Now, clayboard is a non-traditional surface for watercolor and gouache, but its ultra smoothness uh, makes it perfect for this application. So we're uh, taking it a little bit uh, to a new level with this, with this color application. So this is a nice washy blue. I might want a little more water. We're going to use this a little bit like a watercolor to start. All right. Now, following along with the reference image, I have major areas of blue, pink, orange, yellow, and purple, and green, just like uh, we mapped out here on our palette. And then you're just going to uh, brush on this transparent layer. And you can avoid these cloud cover areas. Feel free to dip your brush in water and paint loose. And this is going to look, uh, if you're familiar, uh, this is going to look a little bit like uh, your alcohol inks or um, you know something, uh, something like that uh, where you know the colors are transparent, uh, they're um, maybe pooling a little bit, but we're going to use that to our advantage. Now we want this little bit of purple coming in. And let's lay that down. Feel free to get loose and let your colors blend. As a rule of thumb, you don't want to blend red, yellow, and blue together because your colors will get muddy. But I really like how some of this variation starts to happen. And this is really um, the name of the game with this seascape painting, is uh, working with the layers so that every new layer that you apply you're giving it that much more of a story and that much more of a texture. And that's what I think is so special about this process. So let's go ahead and fill in this sunset sky. Keep going. And I'm just painting intuitively. I'm just not thinking too, too much. letting the colors blend. Okay, now we want to bring in um, a little bit of this yellow. We're going to brighten this up on the bottom here. Make sure you have some clean water available and you'll have a much easier time transitioning your brush from color to color. Now, if you've just joined us or you've been with us this whole time, don't forget, we're doing a $100 Blick e-gift card giveaway and we'll announce the winner at the end of this demonstration in our chat all we want to know is an answer to our giveaway question, where you can be eligible to win just by letting us know where's your favorite place to travel or where would you like to travel to? It's a great time to open up your imagination to places that you would like to go. So let us know. And then don't forget to like our post, like us on Facebook and follow our page and you'll be eligible to win that $100 Blick e-gift card. We also have a bundle page that you can check out just by following the link. 
and you can find all the products that we're using here today as well as the free bonus reference image that you can use to get started on your painting. Now let's quickly fill in some of this other information. So here's your water and it's just loose still. And I'm dipping my brush uh, into water between layers. Look at this little bit of blending at the horizon line, a little bit of green, bringing that in. We're just building up a little bit of texture. If you've never used gouache before, then this is a great opportunity to try it because you're really using this paint in a couple different ways uh, as we work through the piece. Um, so I think if you're a beginner or maybe you've been painting with gouache for a while, maybe it's still a mystery to you. This is really to help unlock that mystery. This is a highly pigment loaded paint, uh, more so than your watercolor or typical acrylics. And uh, you're really going to pack a color punch uh, with this paint. But also, this isn't just typical gouache. This is acrylic gouache, uh, which basically means that it has an acrylic binder added into it, which uh, makes it water resistant when it dries, as opposed to your typical gouache, uh, which if water were to touch that gouache after your painting was complete, uh, it would leave a watermark. So this is a little extra layer of protection for your painting. Now we have a couple of neutral and white areas. White is a color that us painters use constantly and probably in more quantity uh, than several other colors. So I'm going to move it to one of my larger places on the palette here. I'm going to give it some water. Because I'm still working pretty thin. I'm going to take care of some of these clouds. And then we'll work in some neutrals. So let's take care of that. And I am going to let some of these colors run because look at how much space I have on my palette. Now some of these clouds they're just going to be lighter. I can let that there we go. So these lighter areas that I'm breaking out are going to help tell a story of where they should go. Well, let's get some of this. I'm going to start another little mixing area. And I just love this palette for this reason. OK, some lighter cloud areas. This is a great way to fill in a lot of uh, space without having to spend a lot of time. And then we'll build more layers on top of this. And some of this I can blend right on the board. And you might get the sense when you're working, and even more so as we get further into the process, that the gouache almost starts to feel like an oil paint. It becomes very workable, very slick, and uh, easy to uh, blend right on the surface and manipulate uh, however you see fit. But uh, I just wanted to point that out, that, that once you get the gouache moving, it'll start to be really slick for you. And then you'll have to think about those drying times and how those get worked in. All right. So now we've got the bulk of our sunset, and we just have the lighthouse and this hill to fill in. Now remember, red, yellow, and blue are going to make brown. So let's take a little bit of all these colors that we've made 
and we're going to just neutralize them down. Let's add more blue. Boom. See how quickly we got this neutral brownish gray. All right, so let's paint in our landing. Okay, and if I want to darken that, anytime I want to darken, I can just add a touch of black to help differentiate between areas. Okay. Now, if you're thinking this is looking kind of funny, you're not alone, but I will show you where we're going with it. Now let's get this hill. I'm going to bring in a little bit of green. And I'm just keeping it loose. It's kind of a neutral area. Okay. And then our lighthouses are also neutral. And this is beige. Beige is a go-to color, similarly to white. It's just great to have in your toolkit. You can always mix down a beige, but some of these colors are made to be used right out of the tube like we talked about before. So don't be afraid to take advantage of that. So let's just get this blocked in. Do our color blocking. Where we're just getting the idea. Okay, now you have this kind of funny, alcohol, inky, uh, transparent wash of a painting. So let's let this dry. If we go back in uh, to try to apply more layers now, then it might get muddy for us. But I'll show you what we're going for here so that we can continue to build layers onto this painting. Okay. When it's all dry, you should have something that looks like this. Now, Every time we make a painting, it might be different, okay? So maybe you try this technique a couple of times and you get a couple different results. Uh, I would encourage you uh, to keep working with it and seeing what kind of great textures you can get. So let's take those uh, initial concepts and let's build on them. We're going to incorporate a brush stroke technique similar to um, an impasto technique to really build up uh, the good stuff that we see here. So let's continue to set up our palette with some of these main colors that we're using. So we have uh, all of these wonderful blues that we can mix together or use separately to describe different areas of the piece. Don't forget to check out our bundle page where you can see the full color list because I know that there are quite a few colors here. Uh, and let's Let's kick off with those. I think we've got enough to work with here that we can start showing off this technique. Don't forget to add a little bit of water to help get those paints gliding. All right. Try to mix as thoroughly as possible. This is a size round six brush, which is a great size for almost any technique in watercolor. Now, going back to these color blocking areas, we're going to continue to use the color blocking process because our gouache is opaque, but we're going to add in a brush stroke. And that brush stroke is going to help us describe the wispiness of the clouds. And we can even incorporate them around these other clouds. Okay, now I have all these other blues. Now look how easy it is to get some of this sky cloud variation and some of that beautiful opaque coverage just by going right back into it. This is where the paint starts to feel much like an oil. Very slick and blendable. 
I can even go in and add more color variation to describe some of those lighter areas okay, with this brush stroke. What an easy way to cover. And the nice thing as we continue to work is that you're going to see some of those layers underneath every time you build on a new layer. So really this process is about uh, building on layers and letting the story be told through those layers and through those colors. So let's keep working. And we want a little bit of uh, this really nice kind of lilac purple. And we're going to get these clouds covered. Now you might be wondering, again, why we put this bottom layer down. Because we're using clayboard, that first layer acts as a primer for our gouache. So when we go on and add this other layer, with the gouache being as slick as it is, you might see through to the white if we hadn't put down this initial layer. So it acts almost like a surface primer. Similarly to watercolor, when you put that first wash layer down. Okay. Now let's keep with it. As we build layers, we want to use a thicker gouache mixture as we go. Let me get some more yellow, because I want to use that. And really, this is an intuitive process. So I know that I'm, I'm here uh, to demonstrate this technique. But this process will be personal to you. Um, so I, I do think there's a lot of value in this project, especially as a uh, an artist who might just be starting out. You're learning about how to use gouache in opaque and transparent layers. You're getting that acrylic gouache component which has a beautiful finish but is water resistant when it dries. And you're doing it all on clayboard which is remarkably smooth. Now if I weren't using clayboard, go back to adding my white. If I weren't using clayboard, I would still want to use an ultra smooth surface for gouache. I would want to use something where the gouache is going to glide on the surface. As soon as there's a, a tooth component to that surface, then you're going to get less of that uh, matte, slick matte effect. So keeping that in mind. And look how much we can cover in these quick brush strokes. Okay, so all these areas where even there's a hint of yellow, we can bring that out and we'll go back through it to help describe this sunset. Let's go back to this orange orangey red, which is a very sunset color. And I'm going to block that in. Color blocking is the key to success with gouache. So keep that in mind, gouache painters out there or beginners. Let's mix up some more potent orange. And this is why I love this color palette. Look how much freedom I have uh, to mix my colors. Just make sure that when you're done painting, you clean the paint out right away because otherwise it can get stuck in there. So it won't clean out as easily as your typical gouache or your watercolors. So just make sure you're taking the extra step. Now I'm taking these colors and I'm creating more unity by carrying them throughout. So I'm not just sticking them in one place and walking away. Okay. 
So we laid down a lot of this blue before. Let's take some white and let's bring out these ocean waves where they're crashing. Okay, so just building this up where the waves crash. Now, when I'm painting waves, I like to take my round six brush and paint in both directions. And that just makes it look a little more, there we go, like your waves are crashing, right? Here's a big wave crash. Because kind of the water meets itself in that way, right? For me, adding the crashing waves really starts to make this piece come to life. And you can really start to see what's going to happen on the other side when we're all done. Okay. Now that's a nice little map for us. Let's keep going with the second layer and then we'll take it on to the next. Let's get a little bit of this green. I know that there's some green in here, so let's, let's work some of that green in so that we know that this is a hill. Use your brush stroke to help build up that texture. All right, and we mixed all these colors ahead of time. Now, wasn't that a great idea? Because we can keep going back. Now here, look at how beautifully opaque this color goes on. That's really what you want in these next several layers. Now don't forget, we're giving away a $100 Blick e-gift card. And that gift card could be all yours. All you have to do is like our post, like our Facebook page and follow us, and uh, respond in the comments with a question, uh, an answer to our question for the giveaway. And that is, what's your favorite place to travel? I know my favorite place to travel is the beach. So that's probably why I chose this seascape painting today. Because when I think about travel, I think about going to the ocean. And that's where I'd like to be. So that's what I like to paint. All right. And in addition to that, you can get a free printable reference image and check out all the product that we're using here today by visiting our bundle page. And there's a link in the post description that you can follow to get right to that bundle page. All right, one last thing here. There's just a little bit of green at our horizon line. Let's establish that horizon line. Isn't that nice? Look at the rainbow of colors that we have here. Now, in this layer, a couple of other things. You wanna keep building out these ocean waves. And you're just going to use your color options to match what you see. And it's gonna go on the top and the bottom of these waves that we've started. And feel free, like we did with the sky, to incorporate these other blues. Those light and shadow areas are really going to help you define the shape of the water. And you can just keep it loose for now. And you can see how we're starting to build 
these layers out. We're starting to take shape on this idea. I'm going to incorporate some of these lighter blues and it's going to break up the waves. Such a peaceful process. Now, these brush strokes are the same brush stroke that you can carry from start to finish. You can use the same technique for the whole painting and still be able to describe that shape. That's something that I find exciting about uh, the way uh, the way that gouache can be easily manipulated and worked with. Similar to that oil paint that we love so much. Okay, so this is a great second layer. Let's keep moving. You want to let each layer dry, remember, because you don't want the colors to get muddy. So let's keep going. Once this layer is dry, You may do this a couple of times. I'm going to take a round size four at this point. Okay, I'm just gonna scale it down because I have a couple of detail areas that I want to manage. So, these little details on the lighthouse. Etch those in. just lightly with a darker color and then see how we bring out that shape and it's just a couple of quick brush strokes okay now I keep adding white with every layer to keep these crashing waves defined and also every time I go back in I want to reestablish the light and shadow because that's what's really going to drive this piece is the contrast. I'm also going to go back into my sunset sky here and I'm going to keep adding these layers. It's the layering that gives you that full effect and working your colors into other parts of the painting. This is the process. Okay, adding those pinks in. Okay, now let's see. The more I do, I love these little brush strokes creeping up, right? Let's get a little bit of this light purple and just weave it in, add some of that light. Bring that light out. Now careful we don't get muddy. See that was a not so dry area. So we want to work around those. Okay, now we have a couple of very exciting colors in our palette, and those are the fluorescent colors. So as you continue to build these layers, you might want to think about how you can incorporate some of these incredibly bright colors that we can clearly see are going to work with our reference image, uh, if we're looking at the overhead camera, then uh, you're going to pull these colors uh, right out and right into your painting. So I'm just going to show you quickly some of the impact that these colors can have. And we don't need much of it, so I'm just going to share a little space here. Try not to let these uh, colors all blend together, so I'm keeping my similar colors together separate from my others. And this is just 
a quick highlight, very subtle, but with a really nice impact. So this is your luminous red. These are luminous colors. So you're really gonna get a great highlight. Now, let's just go to the areas where we want these colors to really come to life. So maybe over here, maybe here. Look at this, wow. Just bringing that through, look at how much light that brings to our palette. Now, let's do a little bit of this green. There's a little bit of green in the water. When you're working from observation, you want to find those unique colors that are uh, become essential to the piece and really help to bring out its best qualities. Just that little bit of light does so much work in this piece. Right there on the ocean, where you wouldn't expect it. And then this luminous yellow, luminous lemon, I'm sorry. And this is what I mean by using those colors right out of the tube. These luminous colors won't mix the way that your typical primaries do. So feel free to use them right out of the tube. So much more brightness than just your typical yellow. Look at this. And then we can work that into these other areas. Isn't that nice? Okay. So now that we've covered the luminous colors, I can already see all that brightness coming to the surface. Let's get to our last layer, okay? Now, I can see that you've put a lot of work into uh, all of your layers and you're thinking, okay, how do I bring this home? The doneness of a painting is completely up to you. You could work on this painting for hours, uh, a couple hours, or an entire day. Uh, and really, it's about um, balance, form, and composition. When you feel like you have struck a balance in your painting, that's when it's done. That's my opinion. So when I'm working on this, and I'm doing these varied areas, once I start to strike a balance, that's when I'm gonna back off. And I feel really close in this sample. So what you're gonna wanna do at this point is go back and pull out the dark darks and the light lights. And look at how uh, just doing that is giving you that contrast that you need to make this look believable. And really, with painting, it's all about getting the idea of the image that you're creating. It's not about necessarily rendering something perfectly from start to finish. It's really about getting the essence of that image or that plein air location or, uh, you know, really it's the feeling. So we can use a brush stroke to describe a shape and a feeling of that place that we want to travel to. Now don't forget, we're going to wrap up here shortly, but you can still enter to win that Blick e-gift card. And we're going to announce the winner shortly in the chat. So make sure that you let us know the answer to our giveaway question this evening, which is, what's your favorite place to travel? Or where would you like to travel to? And then don't forget to like this post, like our Facebook page, and follow us. And you'll be entered to win that gift card. I'm pulling out a couple of final highlights 
with my round size four. And the more I do that, the closer I get. But I feel pretty balanced with what I have here. I really like the way I've built up the texture. I like the way that I've dealt with the drying times. And I really like the way that the acrylic gouache is speaking in this painting. It's incredibly opaque and it gives you a beautiful finish. And there are colors that you can use right out of the tube to match the needs of the palette that you're working with or the painting that you're working on. We're so glad that you joined us today. Look for the winner of that giveaway in our chat. Uh, but don't forget to go check out the bundle page where you'll get the reference image and find out all about the products that we used here today uh, with a one-click shopping experience. We hope to see you back for our next Facebook Live, and that will be on Thursday at 4 p.m. We'll see you there.